Chapter Three of the Life of Saint Teresa. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Anne Boulay. The Life of Saint Teresa by Teresa of Jesus, translated by the Reverend John Dalton. Chapter Three. She mentions how good company was the means of reawakening virtuous desires within her, and how our Lord began to give her light to discover her errors. As I now began to take delight in the good and holy conversation of this nun, I was pleased in hearing her speak so well on God, for she was a very pious and discreet person. As far as I remember, I was always pleased to hear her speak on heavenly things. One day she began to tell me how she became a religious, which was by merely reading these words of the gospel many are called but few are chosen she spoke to me on the rewards our lord will give those who leave all things to follow him her good company soon began to banish all the habits evil company had led me into and to bring back to my mind the desire of eternal things and also in some degree to divest me of that aversion i had to become a nun which once was so very great but now if i saw any one shed tears at her prayers or perceived that she possessed other virtues i envied her extremely though in this respect my heart was so very bad that were i even to read the whole history of our saviour's passion i could not shed a tear this gave me a great deal of pain i remained a year and a half in this monastery to my great advantage for i began to recite many vocal prayers and prevailed on all the nuns to recommend me to god that he might place me in such a state of life wherein i could serve him but still i wished not to be a nun and that this might not be the state which god would appoint for me i was however afraid to marry but at the end of the time i was in the monastery i had a greater desire to be a religious though not in that house because the virtues there practised were too high for me and their mortification seemed excessive in the extreme some of the younger nuns also encouraged me in these ideas but if all had been of the same opinion i should have gained much by it i had likewise a great friend in another monastery and this was partly a reason which induced me not to wish to be a nun except in the house where this person lived that is if i were to be a nun at all i had more regard for the pleasure of my sensuality and vanity than for the welfare of my soul these good thoughts however of being a nun sometimes came into my mind and went away immediately so that i could not yet persuade myself to be one at this period though i was not without solicitude for a remedy yet our lord was more desirous of disposing me for that state which was the best for my soul i became so unwell that i was obliged to return to my father's house when i recovered i was taken to my sister's house on a visit she resided in the country and great was the love i had for her and if she could have had her will i should never have left her her husband also loved me much at least he showed me every kindness and attention and even for this i am indebted to our lord since in every place i am always treated kindly notwithstanding i have been as ungrateful for this favor as i have for all others on the way to my sister my father's brother resided a very discreet and virtuous man he was a widower and our lord was disposing him for himself for in his declining year he left everything became a religious and ended his days in such a manner that i believe he now enjoys the sight of god but as i passed he wished me to remain a few days with him it was his custom to read good books in spanish and his usual discourse was on god and on the vanity of the world those books he made me also read and though i had no great liking for them yet i pretended i had for i always took the greatest care to give pleasure to others however dear it might cost me hence what in others would have been a virtue in me was a fault because i often conducted myself without discretion o oh my god by what means and ways did thy majesty go on disposing me for that state in which thou wert pleased i should serve thee thou didst even force me against my will to do violence to myself be thou blessed for ever amen though i remained but a short time in this place yet such was the effect produced in my heart by the words of god which i both heard and read and also by the good company i had been in that i came to understand those truths i had learnt when a child viz that all things were nothing how great was the vanity of the world how it would shortly end and that i had just reason to fear if i died in my present state i should be sent to hell but though my will did not yet wholly incline me to be a nun 
yet i clearly saw it was the better and more secure state and so by little and little i resolved to force myself to embrace it in this battle i continued three months urging myself to the religious state by these reasons the labors and trouble of being a nun could not be greater than the pains of purgatory and that as i justly deserved hell it should not be considered much if while i lived i remained as it were in purgatory that so afterwards i might go straight to heaven such was my desire but in this inclination to embrace the religious life it seems to me that i was more influenced by servile fear than by love the devil in the meantime represented to me that i should never be able to endure the difficulties of the religious state because i was so delicately brought up but against these suggestions i defended myself by remembering the labors and sufferings of our lord and that it would not be much for me to endure some for the love of him i should also have recollected that he would give me strength to endure them for i forget whether i had this thought but i am sure i had many temptations at this time fainting fits accompanied with burning fevers began also to seize me for i always had very bad health but i was supported by having become at this period fond of good books i read the epistles of st jerome which encouraged me to such a degree as to make me resolve to acquaint my father with my intention which was for me almost the same as taking the habit for i was so nice about my word of honor that it seemed to me when once i had given my word i could never on any account withdraw it but my father loved me so much that i could not by any means gain his consent neither was the entreaty of other persons whom i induced to speak to him of any avail the most i could obtain from him was that after his death i might do as i pleased i feared however my own weakness lest i should fall back again and so i thought it better not to accept the condition and therefore i endeavored to gain my object in another way as i shall now relate end of chapter three